So, welcome on this Father's Day. Welcome to everybody on Zoom too. We'll give you a wave. And to everybody who joins us later. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. When the children go out, if you need to go to the loo, can you go out that way and in through the other entrance of the hall so that we don't disturb them? Okay, let's open in prayer. Father God, we welcome you. We declare that you are our source of life, our protector and our provider. We need you. We need you and we need to know you as Father. We are here to listen to you and to worship you. Will you help us to worship you as you truly deserve? Amen. Amen. So, notices, I'm not going to bore you with repeating what we say every week. You can, you know, it's the same. <laughs> the only other notice is that collection can't be taken in the usual way because of social distancing. So we now have a new special box somewhere at the back. So if you want to make any monetary compute... It's at the front. Oh, right? It's there. It's at the front. If you want to make any monetary contributions, that's where we do it now. Um, let's start. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your Jewish prayer that they say every morning and every evening and it's a pledge of allegiance to God and to him of praise it's called the Shema it says listen O Israel all God's people the Lord our God is one Lord you shall love the Lord your God 
with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. What a lovely prayer to just say as a rhythm, morning and night, God, you're our God. There's only one God like you, and I'm going to love you with all that I am. And we're going to do a bit, of, a bit more of loving him and expressing ourselves to him. Um, by, I'm going to teach you some sign language. I, I've found, um, I speak sign language at work, I'm not very good at it, but I've found that using my hands to say the words when I can't sing is really, really helpful. Um, and I taught the guys at work the Lord's Prayer in Makaton Sign Language. Now, you might speak BSL at wherever you work or, or at home, but Makaton's all I can do, and I'm not doing it very well, but I thought I'd show you some signs. So if there's any children, do you want to come and sit at the front? I guess we're all here, more or less. So I'll show you some signs. It's our Father in heaven... That makes sense. Uh, that's F. Father, uh, earthly father's down here. That's father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Now you put your crown on. Your kingdom. So that's all the land that you own. Your kingdom come. Your will. So it's what you want in your heart. Be done. Do it. Hallowed be your name again. And it's, hall it's hallowed be your name all the time. Can you do that, kids? Hallowed be your name. Yes? Got it? So if you don't remember anything else, remember hallowed be your name. What does that mean? What does hallowed mean? It means holy yes your name your name is everything that god is so everything that god is if we hallow it it means we want you to be loved for who you are so when we're saying that say god will you be loved will you be loved and honored for who you are every time we say that that's really good so the next bit is on earth here we are on earth as it is in heaven Easy, isn't it? Forgive us. So, you know, forgive us all our trespasses. This is, this is the sign for bad, okay? Our trespasses, that's very bad. <laughs> As we, joining together, forgive all those who trespass against us. Lead us not into bad temptation. <laughs> but deliver us, this is God gathering us and delivering us and protecting us from all that is evil. That's very bad down there, you know, it's not good. For yours is the kingdom, the power, I love this one, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, I'm not good at multitasking, so when I'm singing this and signing it, I might get lost, but it doesn't matter. You know, the most important thing is that we worship God and we speak to him with our bodies. So if, you, if I lose my track, or if you can think of a different sign you want to use, if you want to express yourself, make it up. <laughs> okay? Now's the time to speak to God with your body. Because we're going to make the tune up. So don't yes. Worry. So there's a tune to it as well. <laughs> really simple tune. So we'll sing through the first couple of lines. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Hallowed be your name. Right, you all got it? Yep. See, it's even I got it. It's that tune all the way 
through and you kind of fit the words in. But hallowed be your name is in the same place. If every all verse. else fails, every yeah. other line is hallowed be your name. And we're just going to pray that and keep on praying it. Lord, let your name be honored and loved forever. Okay? Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Hallowed be your name. Earth as it is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Give us this day our daily bread, hallowed be your name. Give us all our trespasses, hallowed be your name. just bless these lovely children will you grow them in your kingdom will you teach them how much you love them and can they all have fun today amen david will you come and do the reading please Today's reading is taken from John chapter 14, verses 7 to 14. John chapter 14, verses 7 to 14. If you really knew me, you would know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? even after I have been among you such a long time. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Thanks, Dave. Now, Father's Day is not easy for many of us in our culture. Many of us today have, have lost our father and we are missing them. Many of us have had absent or angry or even uh, abusive fathers. And today is a day which is very difficult for many. One of our good friends who now wrote, writes and works for the leprosy mission, she wrote this yesterday. I grew up not knowing my dad. I've never in my life called anyone dad. 
I've never celebrated Father's Day. I've never bought a Father's Day card. But I do know how incredibly important it is to have a good, loving father around. As we look forward to celebrating fathers on Sunday, we remember a good father plays an incredibly important role in nurturing, in loving, in teaching, and caring for our children. And I have a good, good father who loves me. And I think because many of us have had an absent or an angry or a difficult father, it can be really hard for us to receive and to experience God as father. It's a healing journey that I've been on and walked with many on over the years. And that healing of our hearts, that healing of the orphan spirit within us, that healing of fatherlessness, that feeling of fatherlessness. And the healing of the father wounds is a journey that I believe all of us need to go on in different ways and in different degrees. And so if you have had an absent father who just wasn't there for you emotionally, psychologically, wasn't there in the home, receive today that great truth that God is the father of the fatherless. If you're missing your dad today and you are still grieving the loss of your dad, he is a father of the fatherless. Let his love in today. Let it in and know that you are loved and treasured and fathered by him. If you had a distant father, we're going to see today in the words of Jesus that our heavenly father runs to us, comes to us to heal us, to hold us, to restore us and to bring us home and to enjoy all the delights of being part of the family. If you had an angry or abusive father, the healing journey can take a lifetime and can take a long time. But letting in the father's love knowing that we have a good, good father who will never leave us, always listens to us, understands us completely, and is there for us at any time of the day or night, knowing that that healing journey, let that love into those wounds, bit by bit, day by day, and God will take you on a healing journey. For God is gracious and compassionate. He is abounding in unfailing love. And it, it isn't always easy for us to see that. We might know it up here, but we need to keep receiving it in here. And it's a journey we go on. I don't know if you've ever read Philip Yancey's book of what is so... Uh, what is so amazing about grace is a book I'd commend to you. And in it, he shares a story, a picture that has stayed with me all of my life. Actually, all of the time since I read that book. And it, it seems like a silly story, but it's one that I've treasured. But it's, he said, I have these fish. He has a, an aquarium in his house. And he said, I've got all these fish and this wonderful aquarium. And he says, I... I go to, I love my fish. They are beautiful. I care for them deeply. And he says, I go there and I, I want to protect them. I want to change their water. I go in to feed them and love them and look after them and protect them. And my fish keep seeing my acts of love, my acts of care, and they, they see it with fear. And they run off and swim off in completely the other direction. So I'm feeding them. I'm trying to declare my love to them. I'm trying to show them how much I protect them and looking after them every day. And yet they swim away. And he says in his book, he says, how can I communicate to these fish of mine 
that I love them and care for them. And he said, I've got to become one of them for them to truly understand. Well, in a far, far greater way than that, God, in his great love, took on flesh in the person of his son and became one of us to show us the Father's love, to allow us to experience the Father's love. And it is extraordinary when Jesus says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. None of the prophets say words like that. When Jesus says the words, the Father and I are one, he is declaring his divinity. And so he is fully human, human, he fully shares our humanity, but he is the Father full divine son of God come to reveal the heart of God the love of God to us and I wonder how you know God has always been gracious and compassionate and abounding in steadfast love God has always been holy and pure and just and right in all that he does but if you ask someone do you do you get the God of the Old Testament? They most probably would say, no, I like Jesus. But I'm not sure I get the God of the Old Testament. Have you ever heard people say that to you? You know, I, I, I like Jesus though. And I wonder whether it's a bit like we've not understood the Father's love the wonders of his majesty and holiness and purity, but the wonders of his unfailing fatherly goodness and love, that everything he does is loving. Everything he does is good. And that we've misheard and misunderstood, and that when Jesus came, he came to show us the Father, and that people started to truly see what God is like. And that we've missed it. And we need to re-understand the compassion and the mercy and the wonders of the Father's love as we look at Jesus. As we get to know him. Jesus came to reveal the Father's heart, to show us the Father's love and to show us the way home. Jesus told that story. We, we know that story of the prodigal son. But I think it should be called the story of the most loving and extraordinary father. Luke 15 is the story of the most extraordinary loving father. The youngest son, as we know, he'd got fed up with being at home. He found, like the rules at home, they were restricting his freedom. He'd, he'd had enough. And he wanted his freedom. He wanted to go off and party with his friends. And so he says to his dad, give me my inheritance early. He's pretty well saying to his dad, I would like you dead. Give me my money now, sir. It's a huge thing. And he goes off to the big city and he spends that wealth on pleasure. And he ends up running out of money, running out of friends, and getting to the lowest point of his life. You don't get much lower than a Jewish boy pining to eat the pig swill. This is the pits. This person has reached the depths of pain and mess and brokenness. And there at rock bottom, Jesus says he came to his senses and he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? He says, I have sinned against heaven and against earth. I'm going to run. I'm going to go back to my father 
and plead for forgiveness. And he's going to say, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But then we read, but while he was still far off. It's a beautiful word in the Bible when it says, but while he was still far off, the father saw him, loved him, stirred with compassion for him. And that is what our God is truly like. Even when we've messed up, even when we've spat in God's face, even when we've taken all the wealth and inheritance that he's given to us and we've trashed it and misused it, God runs to us, comes to us. And he throws his loving arms around us and covers his face with kissing. This is the wonders of God's love. What extraordinary fatherly love. What extraordinary compassion and mercy and forgiveness. Would you do that as a dad? Your kids have taken the inheritance, wandered off, and then they come home. I mean, most of us might struggle a bit to be like this heavenly father. And yet our God is this compassionate, this merciful, this loving. And he comes to us that we might receive that love. There's a story that I love of a, Floyd McClung has it in his book and he tells it was a true story. And there was a young girl who, um, again, she ran away from home, from her farm near Amsterdam. She went up to the big city She thought she was going to be free and all was going to be fine and she got in with the wrong crowd and she ends up um, drinking, ends up getting messed up by drugs, ends up living on the streets. And her parents are just beside themselves, praying for her, longing to find her, longing to reach out to her with compassion and love. And they went through the city. And in bar after bar, in places where they hoped their daughter would never end up, they put up a picture. And it was a picture of their faces, picture of home. And... They put it all over the city. And there was one night when their daughter was so broken and so messed up. But she walked into this bar at about two in the morning. And she turned over. She saw, she saw a picture in the, in the distance. She saw it over there. And she thought, it's reminding something and she went across and there was a picture of her mum and her dad and home and her eyes welled up with tears and she picked up the card and she turned it over and it said whatever you've done wherever you've been please please come home and that night she went home and there was such a loving welcome such a reunion that is the wonders of the compassion and the love of our God whatever we've done wherever we've been however messed up we feel we are the Lord says come home and receive my fatherly love receive it experience it Jesus shows us the way home. He is the way home. Through what he has done for us on the cross, we can be cleansed and forgiven of all of our mess, all of our brokenness. And we can be welcomed back home through him. I'll lead us a little later on in a prayer, maybe for some who 
are here or some who are at home who need to come back to the Father to receive God's love and compassion afresh. And Jesus shows us the way to closeness and intimacy with the Father. There is something that's so attractional about Jesus. There was so, something so attractive about the closeness and the intimacy that Jesus has and had with his heavenly Father. And we're invited into that love and invited into that closeness and intimacy too. The disciples saw the depth and the beauty of that relationship and they wanted to know how to experience it. And so when they said, Lord, teach us to pray, we've, Jennifer, I didn't know Jennifer was gonna teach us the prayer that Jesus taught us in Makaton. But it starts, doesn't it, with those words, Abba, Father. It's the word for Papa for dad it's a close and a deeply intimate word and to express that to God who is Lord and sovereign the one who created all things to know that he is all-powerful and almighty but also is our Heavenly Father who loves us who listens to us who cares for us and gets us it is when those come together, there is an intimacy and a beauty that comes in our relationship. And it's the start of all true ministry. When Jesus comes up out of the waters at his baptism and the father says, this is my beloved son. This is my much loved son. Listen to him. The more we know our identity and security as sons and daughters of the living God, knowing that he says, you are my daughter, you are my son, and I love you. The more we know that we are princes and princesses in the kingdom of heaven, the more we know that security, then our ministry flows from there in the power of the Holy Spirit, that place of security place of knowing we're loved that place of intimacy with the father romans 8 puts it like this for all who are being led by the spirit of god they are sons and daughters of the living god for you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again but you've received the spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out abba father the spirit testifies with our spirit that we are god's much love children let the spirit testify to you be secured in that love that's why i think prayer, prayer ministry is so important to to hear those words that we are his beloved and to let it in that we are daughters and sons of the living god not just to know it here but to deeply receive it and believe it in our hearts that we might live in it and as we do the power and presence of the holy spirit will flow from us if we want to see god doing even greater things that jesus talks about here it flows from this close walk with our heavenly father seeking his face day by day seeking to listen to him to obey him to do what he is already doing. You see, Jesus was so at one with the Father, in tune with the Father, listening to him. He could see where the Father was already at work and then he would take a step. Corrie Ten Boom said to David Watson, one of those great heroes of the faith, she said, he said, stop striving, just nestle in the Father's love. Nestling in the Father's love is a journey for all of us, but the more we do, the more we will see the power and presence of the Holy Spirit working through us 
and amongst us. I remember going to New, new Wine as a, a dad, a young dad. I was tired, I was exhausted. We had two under 18 months and we had a number of sleepless nights and I didn't feel that I was always the best father that I wanted to be. I hadn't been as patient or as loving with my children as I'd wanted to be and I needed to receive the father's love. Some things that I'd experienced in my parenting were coming up in my the way that I was parenting our kids. And I needed healing. I needed transformation. I needed a touch of the father's love. And just to embarrass Josh now that he's 19, I had him on my shoulders. He was a bit smaller then, so I could have him on my shoulders. And um, I just felt overwhelmed with love for my boy. <laughs> love for my kids. I just, wow. But in the same moment, I felt encompassed with the Father's love. I felt the Father say, you know, I love you even more than you love your kids. I love you even despite the failures and the weaknesses that you feel. I've got you. You're mine. You're held. And something started to heal in here. The wounds of the way that I'd been fathered at times. And bit by bit, some, some of the Father's love started to grow in me that I might give that love more to my kids. I've been far from perfect as a dad. But the more I go to my Heavenly Father for the love that I need, the more love that we have to give to them. And then thirdly, I love this bit, that phrase, you know, the end of the Old Testament, those words where, G, where it says, well, there's this promise, isn't it? Jesus turns the hearts of the fathers back to their kids. Rick Johnson in his book, The Power of Fathers, he says, as fathers, we have the power to impact generations of lives. Let's make sure the impact on the 21st century that we have as dads, as grandfathers, as spiritual fathers, is a good and spirit-filled one. Charles Spurgeon said this, the Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go, but be sure you go that way yourself. Our kids get what we believe when they see us living it. Billy Graham said, a good father is one of the most unsung, unpraised, unnoticed, and yet one of the most valuable assets in our society today we have a generation that's grown up without the love of their fathers we have an orphan hearted generation that has a father deficit and many father wounds and we can be a father to the fatherless in Christ's name we can bring his love in our families and through the family of the church. I remember some of the young lads in our previous church uh, whose fathers thankfully were off the scene because they were a nightmare. And it was great to see some of the young dads and the young men in the church be spiritual fathers to these guys. They were spiritual mentors. They were spiritually inspiring to them and we need that. And in this church, I see that too. Spiritual grandfathers, spiritual fathers. If we're gonna see Lucy Farm healed and transformed, if we're gonna see a generation raised up in, of, of youngsters, of boys, of men raised up, 
We need spiritual mentors and spiritual fathers and spiritual grandfathers. What can we do to be better fathers, to be better grandfathers, to be better spiritual fathers to those who haven't had good fathers in our community? I mean, Ephesians 6, I find so challenging. Fathers, don't annoy or exasperate your children. I've done that a few times. Stop agreeing at the back there. But bring up your kids in the ways of the Lord, in the instruction of the Lord. Let's not leave it to our wives or to our family and children's worker or our youth workers. Let's take up our God-given gift of fathers and grandfathers and spiritual fathers and see how we can raise up a generation who will love the Lord with all their heart and their mind and soul and be the men of God, the fathers and the husbands that they can be through the power of the Lord Jesus. Let's look at ways that we can grow that. One of the things that uh, we have done as a family is to try and have family time where right from an early age to get into the Bible with our kids to talk and discuss it on the road, on the journey, around the table. We need to do that more. I'd love to see uh, you know, some prayer triplets of fathers, young fathers, men getting together to sharpen one another, to encourage one another, to support one another in being the best dads, the best husbands, the best fathers that we can be for our generation needs it more than we know. It is a challenge and we will fail, but the more we come, to our Heavenly Father and say, I need your love. I receive that love. We will become those spiritual fathers that our generation so needs. I'm going to invite Liz to come and sing a song to minister to us, which speaks of our Father's love for us, the Father who is always there for us, who loves us, who delights in us, who is always ready to listen to us, already always ready to forgive and to have us home. Let's allow this song just to minister to us and for us to know that we are the child, the sons and daughters that he always wanted, that, he, that we're his beloved and much loved kids. This song is called Wanted.
things come to them. He loves you. He knitted you together in your mother's womb. He completely gets you. He will never leave you or never forsake you. drifted or you feel a blockage of guilt just let the heavenly your heavenly father come running to you and let's take a moment before the cross and just say sorry for any things that have come to mind and just let him fling his loving arms around you and say my daughter son just feel the kisses on your face feel him putting those robes upon you again that ring on your finger and saying you are my son come home you're my daughter come and enjoy the banquet He's robed you in his love. He's clothed you in his compassion. And he's lavished his love upon you. May you fill us and you f be filled anew, we pray, with the love of God. He's lavished his love upon you. His banner over you is unfailing love. And he invites us into the feast again. Don't live on the outside. Let's enter into his courts with joy, knowing we are in the family. And the Father is with us and in us. He's always there to listen to us. Let's receive his love. of wounds that come to mind of places where you're hurting just may the, the healing love of the father just let it in into that place of grief into that place of pain maybe in your heart you need to forgive your father for failures for things that he got wrong just bring them to the cross and say I forgive I choose to forgive May the healing love of God just come into your heart and into those wounds right now as you bring them to the cross of Jesus. It's by his wounds that we are healed. May those wounds in our hearts be healed. May the love of the Father be poured into that place. doesn't mean we walk back into an abusive situation but we can choose to forgive just receive God's healing a little more into those wounds just open the door and let the healing of the Father in and maybe there are some who've never experienced the Father's love or need to come home. The God we love is the father of the prodigals. That word that we had earlier, that whatever we've done, wherever we've been, come home. Maybe there are some here, that, or some online. Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock if you hear.
hear my voice and open the door. I will come in and I will feast with you and be with you. Let's just lead. I'm going to lead us in a prayer. Maybe for any who need to just invite the Father. Invite Jesus. Invite the Holy Spirit into your home and your life today. Maybe echo these words in your heart. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm sorry for all of my failures and faults. I've tasted the pig swell and I want to come home. I need your forgiveness and healing love. And so I open the door of my heart and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for laying down your life on the cross for me, for bearing all my failure and faults. And I invite you in. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Come and heal me. Come and restore me. And come and remake me. Come and be the Lord and Saviour of my life. And I ask it in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. And so let's continue to receive. I think the band are going to sing of the goodness. That he's our good, good Father who loves us there for us, that we can lean back into his love, we can nestle into his love. Let's allow these words just to, just to allow us to nestle and to go deeper into the Father's heart.
Searching for 
invite Jackie. He's got a word. If others have a word, just it would be strengthening and healing. Just come and share it to me. But Jackie, just come and lead. Um, when I was very little, my dad was away a lot. He used to go fix computers in all over different countries um, and in our country. And he, I just had this picture of all the dolls that he brought me from different countries. And I remember my sister saying to me one day, why don't you get your dolls out and play with them? And I'm like, no, they're so precious. They are what my dad bought me. They are a symbol of my dad thinking of me when he wasn't here. And I, I just asked God, well, what's this about? Is this for me? Whatever. And I just feel like God's saying, you may feel a long way from him, but he, he's not a long way from you. He's thinking about you. He's choosing presence for you. And he's choosing presence that are so precious. And, and we're singing songs of a good, good father. And, and for some people here, I just, or maybe at home on Zoom, I just feel like you've somehow lost that good, good father influence in your life. And, and he really, really wants to, to bring those presents for you that will be so special. my dad bringing me a boat he was in the navy little boat from trinidad and tobago and um, it is that he's thinking of us he's got good gifts for us because he loves you come on georgie come and share a word as well what a courageous thing to come and share i would say i'd like to speak of um forgiveness for those fathers that weren't present that didn't buy us dolls that hurt us, that abused us, that maybe touched us inappropriately. Um, my father's still alive, my blood dad. Um, and I spoke to him recently because my mother, he was the love of her life and she passed away. So I went to see him a few months back um, and sat with him for a few hours so that my mum could speak to him on FaceTime. Um, and how was I able to do this? Because I used to hate him. Um, I was resentful, I was hurtful, I knew what I'd lost. I also knew there were some parts of my life where my mum had kept me safe from keeping me away from him. So I went through the forgiveness program, you know, the stuff that we did a couple of Easter's ago here, and I'm hoping that, I really hope that when, you know, all of this time has changed, that maybe we could do that again. Um, so for me, um, today isn't painful anymore, um, because I gave all my pain to God and to Jesus. And I really did forgive, and it took me a long time to forgive. And those that were here then know kind of the, what this, the journey I went to go through. So what I want to say to people is, you know, we do have a father, our heavenly father, and he does love us. And to have hope and faith in him makes me feel okay today about that other one. You know, he's still there, and I don't feel no badness or no malice. I haven't texted him and wished him a happy Father's Day because he's never really been a happy father to me. So, you know, um, but yeah, so so for those of you that, you know, are still holding on to that pain, that's still, you know, because it's a horrible pain, um, have faith in this father because he's made me feel that I am worthy and I am loved. And I was, he was my first father because he chose me, Amen. you know? So I'm here because of him. Um, yeah, so faith and, and forgiveness so yeah amen amen yeah. amen well that was the best sermon we've had <laughs> faith and forgiveness georgie that was beautiful shall we can we just sing good he is a good good father let's just let that forgiveness and that healing in in deep measure let's just sing it again we're going to then come to the banquet as you know a bit like that prodigal son you know what he yelled at his servants let's kill the fatted calf i can't wait till the fact we can kill the fat can we we can't do that but we, but we can have a proper feast isn't it and actually coming to commune with our heavenly father thanking him 
for the forgiveness that heals us, that helps us to forgive almost the un unforgivable. But this is an invitation to the banquet. And we're going to spend some time just coming and thanking God for his incredible forgiveness and mercy at the cross. So he is a good, good father. You're a good, good father. Here you are. Here you are. Here you are. We're still far off. God saw us, loved us, had compassion on us, ran to meet us in his son, threw his loving arms around us and kissed us, and welcomed us home. And he says, bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's feast and celebrate for this son and daughter of mine was dead and is now alive again. They were lost and they've been found. Let's come and celebrate the feast. This feast is about faith and forgiveness. Let's receive his love again. Bible says, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, at the end of supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the full forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, drink it in remembrance of what I did for you. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again in glory to take us fully into that heavenly banquet. And so let's take a moment to thank him for his love, to thank him for his mercy, to thank him that he is a good, good father who loves us. Let's take some time at the feast, just knowing and letting it sink in that we are sons and daughters and we are beloved and delighted in our Heavenly Father. And so, Lord Jesus, we thank you again 
for laying down your life for us on that cross, for stretching your arms out and bearing our sin, our sicknesses, our shame, and all of our failure. We thank you that you bore it in your body on that tree. We pray now, may the victory and the peace and the healing of ours be given to us in fresh measure. that we might give that forgiveness to others. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one that could ever say. We're going to um, do our last uh, song. Why would I worry? Speak to the mountain.
contact Martin or me or anybody that you trust to um, just chat and pray and come to that place where you feel totally secure in the love of the Father. So I'm just going to bless you. This is the ancient blessing that the priests spoke over all God's people, bringing you to a place where they felt totally confident in his love. So the Lord bless you and keep you. May you know that his face is shining on you. May you know his grace and favour and know that he has only good things for you. May you experience him turning his face towards you in welcome and know his peace in the depths of your being. Amen. <laughs> 